when we think of the best ever diss songs, there's a few that pretty much always come up. You'll probably think of Hit Em Up by Tupac, Ether by Nas, and The Takeover by Jay-Z, amongst others. But what if we told you that the world's best diss song wasn't any of these? And in fact, it wasn't even by a rapper. What if the world's best diss song came from none other than the king of pop? So, what makes a good diss song? This is a subject that can cause a lot of debate, but it's generally agreed that a great diss track is aggressive and abrasive. A great diss track aims for complete and utter character assassination of the target. It should aim to incense and embarrass the target by hitting as close to home as possible and bringing to light things that really go after the credibility of the target. And if you could throw in comments about family members, even better. Tupac bragged about sleeping with Biggie Small's wife, Faith Evans, or Nas calling out Jay-Z for using Biggie's lyrics and using Biggie's death as his own chance to step into the spotlight are perfect examples of this and why those tracks are often mentioned. You might even bring your crew for backup and to show strength in numbers, like Tupac did with The Outlaws, and Dr. Dre did with Snoop Dogg when he was involved in beef with his former NWA band member Easy e We know what you're thinking. Michael? Mr. Peace and Love? Mr. Heal the World? Yes, but let's not forget Michael was from the hood. Okay, he became very famous very young, but Gary, Indiana is not Little House on the Prairie. If you come for the king, you better be ready for him to take you down. And that's exactly what Michael did in 1995 with the song DS. Let's break it down. First off, a diss song needs a target. The target of DS, according to the lyric book, is a man with those initials, Dom Sheldon. But this was a clever cover story. Michael is not singing the name Dom Sheldon in this song. He's singing the name of this man, Tom Snedden. Who is Tom Snedden, you might wonder? Well, the late Tom Snedden was the closest thing that Michael Jackson had to an arch enemy. Snedden was the district attorney for Santa Barbara County in California. That's the county where Neverland Ranch is located. Tom Snedden is best known for being the district attorney that brought charges against Michael Jackson twice accusations of child abuse. Worth noting that Tom's vendetta against Michael failed on both occasions, because as we all know, Michael was found not guilty. Tom Snedden's nickname was Mad Dog for his refusal to let go of cases. <coughs> Remember that fact, we're going to come back to it. And he was truly a nasty piece of work. Amongst other things, he was caught trying to plant false evidence against Michael in the 2005 trial. He publicly insulted and made jokes about Michael and referred to him as wacko. Furthermore, he deliberately waited until the release day of Michael's Number Ones compilation to raid Neverland, despite claiming to have known about allegations since the previous June. All of these actions and more led people to believe that the mad dog had a vendetta against Michael, was angry about the results of the first allegations, and that Michael had continued to be successful after them. And despite his claiming to have never heard the song DS, we find that highly unlikely. We think he probably did listen to it, and that this was probably his reaction. Back to the song. So, Michael has his target. Time to assemble his crew. How about the most famous, the most notorious guitarist of the decade? The axe wielder from the most dangerous band in rock and roll. Yes. Step to the stage, Slash. Michael Jackson and Slash? So, target acquired, crew assembled. Let's look at the song. The chorus is simple. Tom Snedden is a cold man. Down, boy. That's the character assassination right there and the embarrassment. What's really clever about the repeated ad lib of Down, boy is that not only is this a reference to Snedden's nickname, Mad Dog, but it's also a clever reversal of a common racist trope where white slave owners would aggressively and patronizingly refer to black men as boy, a trope that was still common decades after the abolition of slavery. Michael is weaponizing his own position in society 
as a superstar to mock his enemy of his nickname by reversing a common racist trope that Snedden's ancestors, if not Snedden himself, surely used. This is genius. Michael simultaneously calling Snedden literally a dog and an insignificant boy. We aren't going to quote every single lyric of the song. The link is in the description if you want to listen. But let's pick out some of the most savage lines. <laughs> Here, Michael's saying Snedden thinks he's great despite being terrible at his job. BSDA meaning bullshit district attorney. Says he is unpopular and a loser with no social life. Infers that he is a racist and white supremacist aligned with the Ku Klux Klan, the racist group, and that he has no moral compass or ethics because his mama never taught him right. I mean, that is absolutely savage. In four lines, Michael's just totally destroyed the guy. If this was a rap battle, it'd be game over. Elsewhere in the song, Michael accuses Snedden of being an agent of the CIA and that he threatens the FBI to do his bidding. After calling in Slash for his incredible solo and repeating his assertion that Thomas Snedden, sorry, of course we mean Dom S. Sheldon, is a cold man, just in case you weren't sure that Michael was pretty damn angry at this point, the song ends with the sound of a gunshot. So we really do have every single element of a great diss track here. Aggression, abrasion, character assassination, bringing your crew, taking shots at loved ones, destroying credibility with home truths. When it comes to the pillars of the diss track, MJ proved he was no stranger in Moscow. And we think DS is up there with any hip hop diss song in terms of pure fire. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. We're the Violet Reality, and we'll catch you next time. Hey, St. Paul here. Make sure you go subscribe to the Violet Reality, the funkiest channel on YouTube.